ruined that movie. Then they put her in a few other movies, and that was the end of her film career. So now she's looking to, uh, you know, be popular again. So she joined 80 other actors to fight guns now for the Michael Bloomberg backed every town for gun safety. Now, when you hear this, the others will part, be part of the council of stars representing an entertainment industry that has made billions of dollars or violent shoot 'em up. <laughs> Paul Bedard writes, it is sure to give the Everytown Movement a huge promotional pow as the actors fan out around the country to promote gun control. Other hypocrites include Alec Baldwin. He's a, he's a very uh, pacifist man. Spike Lee never made a movie about guns. Kevin Bacon never made a movie about violence. Ellen DeGeneres never was violent. And Kim Kardashian. Why is she in that list? The only people she killed were with her fat behind passing them in a crowded audience. In a statement, Everytown said that the new creative council will use its collective reach and cultural influence to support common sense solutions proven to save lives from the gun violence that claims, ah, blah, 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 blah. Says Julianne Moore, who chairs the new group. I don't want to read what they say. It's nonsense. Keep the Second Amendment, but add some common sense laws like universal background checks to cut gun violence. Okay, yeah. Listen to me. The group's aim is to seize your guns. The group is filled with people, maybe 90% of them, who have romanticized guns, made fortunes off guns, gun violence, hatchets, axes, and they say that Hollywood, they say that Hollywood is not to blame. I would say that Hollywood and violent videos are to blame, along with uh, prescription drugs for the young male population in America. Eight five five seven hundred. I don't know my number right now. They shut, shut off that to eight five five four hundred savage. It's not like my memory's failing. I don't know what it is. I think I'm bored of politics, but we'll keep it going for a while. I was supposed to be on vacation, you know. <sighs> Today was supposed to be the first day of my one-week vacation. Did you hear what happened? Why I didn't go? You didn't hear? I'm not supposed to be here. There's supposed to be a fill-in today for a week. But I'm here. It's okay. I worked all morning preparing the show. I watched the debates last night till my eyes almost came out of my ears. I didn't go. You won't believe it. I told you my friend had a boat that I was invited on. The whole crew came down with the flu. Before we even left, which from crossing the Atlantic Ocean on his boat, apparently, I don't know what it is. I don't know how it happened, but everyone got sick. It's lucky I didn't go. So here I am. I may, I may leave for a day or two. Maybe Friday I'll go somewhere along the weekend. I'll go down to L.A. or something. I'm going to be a lot of, many, a lot of year, uh, time in L.A. coming up in the future. I'm one of the people in San Francisco who likes L.A. I love the, f the false snobbism. Oh, I don't, I don't like L.A. We're from San Francisco. Crime. We like feces in the street here. We love bums uh, defecating in mailboxes. I mean, really, real superior. Great, I love it. Great city. People are like, going to meetings now about the violence from the bums. They, they see that the hippies in the street are violent bums with guns now. What did they think they were? What did they think they were with the dog chains and the pit bulls? They thought that they were downtrodden youth who were born to work for Bernie Sanders? Who do they think the people are on the bicycles who try to run you over? Nice eco people or psychotics with two wheels? WBOB, uh, Line 7, welcome to the Savage Nation. Yeah, Bernie, I'd like to ask you a question about national defense. Okay, if, what's the question? What's, what's, what's the question? Well, the question is, if it came down to that uh, the only way to protect the United States was a uh, uh, nuclear strike in one of the Middle Eastern countries, would you be able to push the button, Bernie? Absolutely not. I'm totally opposed to nuclear weapons. I want a nuclear-free world. Uh, a nuclear weapon can ruin your entire day. I've been against nuclear weapons since the 1960s when I was an anti-war activist. I was never against the brave troops, but I was against the war. I am totally against bombs of any kind, whether they be stink bombs or atomic bombs. Now, that raises the question of how I would fight ISIS. We admit ISIS is com filled with people who uh, lack economic opportunity, and because a global warming, a desert was created a very long time ago. Remember that. Go back in time, and you will see that that was once a forested area in the Middle East. This is a direct example of why global warming must be stopped right now. Because if it wasn't for global warming and the trees dying, there would be trees and orchards in the Middle East rather than sand. And as a result of the global warming from going back to the Pleistocene, you have a lot of violent Arabs who are miserable and unhappy from the heat and the lack of air conditioning. And to answer your question simply, no, I would not nuke them. I would offer them jobs. I would do a job creation program in the Middle East. I know an awful lot about jobs, although I've never held one. I know a lot about it. That's your answer. Thank you.
Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. My Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com, the only company I trust to protect my wealth with gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. You want to see how sick progressives are? You want to see how mentally ill they are? This just came out from the New York Post, Joe Tacopino. De Blasio, a lover of the communist Sandinistas, a hater of everything American, has removed the portrait of George Washington in order to add more diversity to the artwork hanging in the mayor's office in New York City. His brilliant wife, the genius wife, Christine Charlene McRae, uh, is the one who was behind this. They're getting rid of, rid of uh, George Washington. They're putting in diversity art. Include pictures of famed abolitionist Frederick Douglass and former slave turned philanthropist Pierre Toussaint. That will show the new New York City in the parlor room. And this is what they do. Now, you say, what's the big deal? It's only a painting of George Washington. Ladies and gentlemen, let me start from the beginning and do it in 30 seconds or less. These are hardcore communists. This is what Mao Zedong did during the Cultural Revolution. I explained it to you in great detail. It starts with the removal of art and history and the replacement of art and history, the revision of art, the revision of history by communists. It leads to very bad ends. Look at what Pol Pot did in Cambodia. Look at what Mao Zedong did in China. It started with cultural revision. It ended with millions dead. De Blasio is a psychopath. He's no different than anyone else you saw on the stage last night, except Jim Webb. I explain it all in Government Zero. Yes, my friends, it's all in that book. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE. 855-400-7282. Savage. Secretary Clinton, I want to start with you. Plenty of politicians evolve on issues, but even some Democrats believe you change your positions based on political expediency. You were against same-sex marriage, now you're for it. You defended President Obama's immigration policies, now you say they're too harsh. You supported his trade deal dozens of times, you even called it the gold standard. Now suddenly last week, you're against it. Will you say anything to get elected? Well, actually, I have been very consistent over the course of my entire life. I have always and fought what for the same values matter? and principles, but like most human beings, including those of us who run for office, I do absorb new information. I do oh, look boy. at what's happening in the world. Um, oh you know, take the trade deal. I did you say know. when I was Secretary of State three mm -hmm. years ago that I hoped it would be the gold standard. It was just finally negotiated last week. And in mm -hmm. looking at it, it didn't meet my standards, my standards for uh, more new good jobs for Americans, mm -hmm. for raising wages for uh, we Americans. We get the picture. And I want... We get the picture. She's a, a facile uh, candidate. Let's put it to you that way. We'll be very polite about it. So she won't answer the question, which is what you'd expect from a snake who has great experience in bamboozling the media. And I, I was shocked that, uh, that Anderson Cooper actually did a good job. I'll be honest with you. I was ridiculing him yesterday. I was skeptical. I thought he did a great job. I thought some of the questions were tough. Now, let's be clear. It was not like Fox News where Martha Washington tore at Trump immediately, tried to turn everybody against him and rip them apart. I mean, if this was a really equal debate, Cooper would have had the guts to attack Hillary Clinton about the email scandals in Magazi right off the top. And, you know, he could have said really direct, harsh things about it because we know that we know that she's guilty of uh, both. You say guilty of what? Come on, let, let's not spell it out. If you had 30,000 missing emails, you'd ask why are they missing? Was it about her yoga class or uh, which tailor she's going to use to make her another burqa? I mean, a sweatpant, whatever that she wears. Let's see, uh, yeah. Oh, here's a good one. M-A-L, Max, line nine. You're on the Savage Nation. What's on your mind? Dr. Savage, good talking to you. I, like you, would consider voting for Jim Webb. He is the only veteran that's running on either side of the aisle. I'm a former Marine and a retired law enforcement officer of 30 years. And with what's looming in the background with Russia and China and what's coming down the road with ISIS, I feel like we would need a strong leader, preferably someone with military experience. A hundred percent right. And let me tell you, Max, 
No, no, none of the Republicans have any military experience or on the stage. That's to be honest with you. And it's not just military experience. He was not sitting in the back uh, areas. The man was awarded the Navy Cross for heroism in Vietnam. He was awarded the Silver Star, the bronze, two bronze stars and two purple hearts. He's a real hero. But more than that, he ran the Navy when it was still the U.S. Navy. Jim Webb ran the Navy when it was the U.S. Navy before it became a floating high school. Now, the problem for us is this. Although he is a conservative Democrat, you and I both know he doesn't have a ghost of a chance to beat uh, the machine. That machine is never going to let that man get past uh, a few debates. Do you agree with me on that? I agree 100%, Dr. Savage. It's very sad that you're correct. Yes. Wouldn't it be wonderful if we could hear, well, you know, we saw a hero emerge out of the crowd. And at the very least, if one of those people should, God forbid, become president, would you please promise us that Jim Webb will be made Secretary of Defense instead of another idiot that they put in? But I don't think that's going to happen either. But uh, at least we saw there's a conservative Democrat out there. I didn't even know that they exist. My friend, I'm sending you Government Zero, and I hope that you enjoy the facts uh, that are spelled out for you. 855-400-7282, line number two, David, on WJR in Detroit. Go ahead, please. Yeah, a question for Bernie Sanders. I was wondering, the Obama administration, under that administration, the uh, relationship between law enforcement and the general public has been stressed and strained, to say the least. What would you do to heal that relationship? Well, there's no question in my mind that the police have overreacted their entire life in this country. The first thing I would do is make all police in America give up their weapons and understand what it's like to be an unarmed civilian walking in these dangerous neighborhoods. That's first of all. Let them walk in the shoes of the others. There is an Indian statement that I know from Vermont. Do not criticize a man until you have walked in his own moccasins. So I would definitely say that the police should give up their weapons, number one. And number two, they must apologize to all the people who have been incarcerated in this nation, in this great nation, for crimes they may or may not have committed. But the fact is, there is an adage I learned in the gutters of New York that is still 100% true. It is known very well in the socialist circles in which I ran. I would rather 99 guilty people go free than one innocent man be uh found guilty. And I stand by that. And that stands also for ISIS. I'd rather 99 bombers mutilate and kill and cut people's heads off than take one innocent Arab and put him into jail. That's, that's what I stand for. That's why I understand things that you could never understand. And that's why I will be the next president of the disunited States of America. Thank you. Thanks you very much. Thanks you very much. That was not good. That was not bad. I would redo it slightly, but it wasn't bad. It was pretty good. But the shrimp is starting to affect my brain. The brain mechanism is starting to uh, be affected. Let's do this for a few minutes right now as people are calling in. They're lining up outside the Big Tent. Phone number is 855 You know how I envision the show. There's an old adage. I used to use a mental image for this show, which is, you know, the hardest thing in radio is to start the show. You know that. It's like getting a plane off the ground till you get it to cruising altitude. Same thing whether it's a rocket, a plane, or a talk show. The first 10 minutes are sheer H-E-L-L. Very hard to do. Takes a great deal of courage and skill. We're at cruising altitude, so what I want to do now is cruise for a few minutes by playing for you an interview I did this morning on the local station in San Francisco on KSFO. Let's hear. I am convinced the reason why we have such a large streaming audience here on the KSFO Morning Show, we do. We have people from all over the country listening to us, is because Michael Savage has the largest streaming audience in all of talk radio. And he, of course, is our favorite talk show on the lineup. He started right on this station back in the 90s. I've been listening to him all along. So has Katie. Katie was raised on Michael Savage. And here he is right now, the doctor. How are you, Mike? She was raised on me. No wonder she's so crackpot. <laughs> <laughs> and proud of it. Proud of it. Thank you. Welcome to the Crackpots Club. <laughs> Well, are people after you this morning? I'm looking at your Twitter feed. I mean, you were going crazy last night during this debate. I read that Donald Trump was going to live tweet, so I said, you know what? I had my staff teach me how to do it. Having grown up on a royal portable, you know, this was all fun to me. So I watched the debate, and I tweeted. Can I read you some of the tweets, guys? Please. I'd love to, because they, I was following you last night, and I was quite entertained, as one would expect. Well, I was okay for a while till I had to go out for Chinese food. I could only take Bernie Sanders 
spittle coming out of the side of his mouth for a while, and then there was enough already. I mean, he was low on the uh, the meds ran out. I think over about 30 minutes, Bernie's meds ran out. The first one was, will Bernie wear a clean suit for the debate or a filthy workers' party outfit? That received an awful lot of, uh, I don't know how you call it, likes, dislikes. I don't know what those things are called. People got a kick out of that one. Every time I attacked them on a personal level, because